welcome to Really Ram Tutorials. Today I'll be showing you how to do the 2.3.8 Packet Tracer Lab Activity. I'm going to read out the questions and walk you through how to do it. Objectives. Part 1. Access a Cisco switch through the serial console port. Part 2. Display and configure basic device settings. Part 3. Access a Cisco router using mini USB console cable. Background scenario is various models of Cisco routers and switches are used in all types of networks. These devices are managed using a local console uh, connection to a remote connection. Nearly all Cisco devices have a serial console port to which you can connect. Newer models also have a USB console port. In this packet tracer, physical mode, PTPM, uh, activity you will learn how to access Cisco device via a direct local connection to the console port using the genetic the generic terminal emulation program in packet tracer after you have established a console connection with the Cisco device you can display or configure device settings in this activity you will only display settings and configure the clock in the lab instructions part 1 Access a Cisco switch through the serial console port. In this part, you will connect a PC to a Cisco switch using a roll rollover console cable. This connection will allow you to access the CLI and display settings and configure the switch. Step 1. Install and investigate 2960 switch. There are several switches, routers, and other devices on the shelf. Click and drag the 2960 to the rack. In Packet Tracer, most devices that you will drag to the rack or the table are automatically connected to power. Some devices will require you to turn on the power. However, a 2960 switch powers up as soon as you move to the rack. So if we go over here, this is the rack. You click on Control and scroll, or you can click over here to zoom in. You can see it says rack. We're just gonna move, move over. Here's the cable pegboard. Here's the shelf. And the table is right here. So we're gonna go over here to the shelf. And we need to find the 2960 switch. It's right here. So you can zoom out. And you click it and drag it to the pegboard. Let me zoom out a bit more like that right there on the rack. Now if you see on the rack this automatically gets connected. If you hover over it it'll say 2960 and that's the cable it's connected to. Now it says right click on 2960 switch and select inspect front. Right click it and click on inspect front. It'll zoom in for you so you can come over here. You can zoom in or out and you can exit out. It says use the zoom tool to get a better view. Notice that there are 24 ports to connect users and two additional ports to connect this switch to other switches or routers. Click on the X to X out of it. Right click 2960. Select inspect rear. It'll do the same thing over here. Use the zoom tool to get a better view. Notice that there are 24 ports. Uh, or more than one part. Use the zoom tool to get a better view. Notice that there is a console port for connecting a rollover cable to a PC. Talk about this port right here. Click on the X. Scroll down. Install and investigate the PC. So just zoom out. Click and drag the PC to the table. Now this is the PC, the big tower. Just click and drag it. We moved over. Right click on the PC and, ins and select inspect front. Right click, inspect front. Pop up this view, you can zoom in. Or you can zoom out. Now right click on the PC, inspect front. Click the red button, uh, power button to turn on the PC. You should now see a green light on the front of the PC. Right click, inspect front again. There's a red button, and there's a green light. 
there is a fast Ethernet interface. Next uh, to it is an RS-232 port for connecting a rollover cable. I click the front. Let's see here. Let's zoom in. So you get a better view. There's your fast Ethernet, and there's your rollover cable. Below there are two USB ports that can uh, that can also be used for console access. You can use these two to plug into the console. Step three: connect and switch and uh, and PC using the rollover console cable. On the cable pegboard, click a blue rollover console cable. On the PC, click the R2232 port. So now let's go over here. If you hover over these, it'll tell you what kind of it is. That's a copper straight. Then we have, let's see here. We have the blue one. This is a console. Click it. And then click there. And all you gotta do is go back over to the 2690, click on right click, inspect rear, plug it into console. And now they're connected. As you can see this is cable. Step four, switch the packet tracer terminal program to establish a console session with the switch. Just right click it, or click on it, or I mean left click, select desktop, and then you can go over to terminal. And here are all these settings. We're just going to leave them at the defaults. Click on OK. And now we're in the terminal. The terminal default settings match the console port settings for communication with the Cisco iOS on the switch. Click OK. The, la the last line in the terminal output should be uh, you press return to get started. We did that. There's a press return. All you gotta do is hit the enter key. And then it'll say switch is greater than the greater than symbol. Press the enter key to get to user exec mode. So now this means we're in user exec mode. Just scroll down. Here it'll show you what it should look like. Part two, display and configure basic device settings. In this part, you are introduced to the user and privilege exec modes. You will determine the iOS version, display the clock settings, and configure the clock on the switch. Step 1. Display the switch iOS image version. While you are in the user exec mode, use the show version command to display the iOS. So you just type in show version. Hit enter. It'll give you all of this. If you click the space bar, you can get more. So now it says which iOS image and version is currently being used by the Switch. Here's the Switch version, 12.2, and here's the image, C2960 LAN base M. Now it says step two, configure the clock. As you learn more about networking, you will see that configuring the correct time on a Cisco Switch Will, will be helpful when you are troubleshooting problems. The following steps let you manually configure the internal clock of the switch. Display the current clock settings. Type in show clock. Enter. It'll give you the current time. So here's the time. It'll be military time. Monday, March 1st, 1993. You must be in privileged exec mode to change the clock settings. To enter privileged exec mode, type enable uh, at the user exec mode prompt. Right now we can't actually change it, but if we want to, you have to go into privileged exec mode. Just type in enable. Enter. And now you can tell it worked because it's a switch and there's a hashtag instead of a greater than symbol. This means we're in privileged exec mode. Just scroll down over here. Configure the clock setting. The question mark uh, provides help and allows you to determine the expected input and in configuring the current time. Date and year, press enter to complete the clock configuration. Switch. Now, they want you to type in clock, space, set, 
space and then question mark. And then right after that, it'll say current time. And then we'll be, it'll bring us back to where we were typing. So now it says they want us to enter the current time. Now if we go over here to the left on our instructions, they want it to be 15 colon 28 colon 00. zero. And this is at the 24 hour format, like military time. They want you to do space and do question mark again. And that will ask you for the month of the year. Now we'll go down here. They want us to put in November. So N O V, capital N. And then space 11. For the day in the month, or the month in the year. We're going to do a space in question mark. Now it asks for the year, which we're going to set to 2020. And enter the show clock command to verify the clock setting has updated. First, we have to hit enter. And if there's no error, you can type in show clock. Enter. And now it should be updated to what we just set. So there's our 15283 uh, Wednesday, November 11, 2020. That's all right. Part three, access a Cisco router using a mini USB console cable. In this part, you will install a 4321 router and connect a laptop to the console using a mini USB cable. Step one, install and investigate a 4321 router. So you want us to exit out of the terminal, go over to the shelf. They want a 4321 router. And here's one here. It's 4321. Just remember where that is. We're going to zoom out, click it, drag it onto the uh, rack. Now, if you no notice up here, there's a second power cable. 4321. And we got the 2960. So here's 2960, here's 4321. This is our router. Right click the router and select inspect front, right click, inspect front, you can zoom in, you can zoom out, I'm going to leave it zoomed in for now. Note that there's a power switch on the left, click it to turn on the router, right here, if you click it, now that light will change on the bottom, just like that. Click to use the router, also notice the other ports that are available. There is an RJ45 and a mini USB port for console connectivity. Hit the X to get out of that. They want us to install and investigate the laptop. We're going to zoom out again by clicking control, scrolling up the middle mouse wheel. They want us to click and drag the laptop. Put it right here. Then they say right click the laptop to inspect. Right click, inspect front. You can zoom in again, and here we have another power button and some USB uh, ports. So we click the power, the green light turns on. Notice that there are two RJ45 ports, one for RS232 and another for fast Ethernet. There's one there, there's your fast Ethernet. There's also two USB ports, you can use either of these to connect the mini USB port uh, on the 4321 router. I want you to click X to zoom out. Step 3, connect the router and laptop using the mini USB cable. On the cable, peg bit, uh, the cable pegboard, click a mini USB cable. That'll be these here, we've got two of them here. It'll say USB. Just click it. On the laptop, click on the mini USB port. So if you click control and then scroll in, you can zoom in. Actually, go back here. Click it. Then click right there on the uh, USB port. Just show you. Right here, I put it in. And zoom back out a little bit. Go over here to the router, which is the 4321 router right here. You can also right click and click inspect view. 
and you can add it in that way. They want us to plug it into the USB right here. So click it. I'm going to zoom in to check. And there's that USB cable. Now we can zoom out. Step four, configure the packet tracer terminal program to establish a console sec session with the switch. Click on the laptop, go to desktop, go to terminal. Then you can leave these as the defaults, click OK. And now we're in the terminal. Let's go over to, to the instructions. It'll say, after the router has completed its startup process, the following message is displayed. Enter in to continue. Would you like to enter the initial configuration dialog? You can either type in no or in. Hit enter. And then it'll start. And we're done. Let's see here. And hit enter one more time. Now I'll ask you a reflection question. How do you prevent unauthorized personnel from accessing the Cisco device through the console port? To do that, you need to physically secure the device so that nothing so that no one can get to it, and you should use a password to protect it. Then what are the advantages and disadvantages of using the serial console connection compared to the USB console connection? To a Cisco router or switch. If the PC has a serial port and a DB9 to RJ45 cable is available, it is generally easier to connect to the router or switch using the serial console port. If the PC does not have a serial port, then a USB to serial adapter can be used. If you are frequently connecting the, to a Cisco router that has a mini USB console port, this can be the most effective effective method after Cisco drivers have been installed because almost all P PCs have USB ports now. And that is it. That's how you do the 2.2.8 Cisco Packet Tracer Lab. If you enjoyed the video or learned something, please like and subscribe. Thanks for watching.